time for the DIY under gravel filter. Now before I completely show you, I know you see a little bit here, before I completely show you, I want to show you a few other tanks. And I've done this two ways, more than two ways really, but I've mainly two ways. So we can start with this one. You can see here I've got half inch PVC and you can also see I'm eating up about two and a half inches of my tank space doing that. Now I'm eating up space, that's why I don't do it like this anymore. If I was in a 125, let's say if I was in a 40 gallon and up, I would not use the egg crates. I would, I would go to something else. Just because they may fail on me, they may end up being too small, I would not use half inch PVC. I would just find something, something bigger. They do have a PVC smaller than half inch. Perhaps you use that. Um, for half inch, anything 75 gallons and up, I would go to a half inch PVC. Once your water volume gets that big, losing that much in, in gravel space isn't going to break my heart. Uh, and it is a lot easier to cover this up. I'll show you in another tank. But again, I have three quarter inch PVC. Um, three quarter inch PVC, and in this tank I don't have any sponge. I probably should because I have fry in here and, and, and they're wild fish, so. Um, I have F1 fry and a wild live bear. So anyways, we can go to another tank where I like this. And this is my shrimp tank outside, or out of my fish room at least. I have my snowball neocaridinas in here. There's one right there. Um, and this one I do have foam inserts so I do not lose anybody down in there. And um, 3 quarter inch PVC, 90, connector, and a, a tube. And basically here I use the, uh, the egg crates and basically it saves me a bunch of room. So you remember in the other one we were about 2 inches above you know the black little um, you know piece that whatever it's called that holds the tank together um, just checking her out she looks real milky but what it is is she has got see if she minds she has got babies down there that she's holding wonder if that's why she's cloudy no, she's not that cloudy, just a weird light, okay. But, um, yeah, I don't lose nearly as much, and the reason I have a tiny sponge is I'm still... This tank was uncycled, <laughs> basically, um, when I put them in, so I'm, I'm scared to pull that out just yet. I want to give it a few more weeks before I start pulling um, anything out, and be honest, I'll probably squeeze that sponge off before I pull it out. But, everything works fine, it's um, doing its job. Um, and we actually have a different DIY in the gravel Alright, so for these three snail breeding totes um, in the living room, what I've done is I've capped those with, you know, a similar gravel type, and I have a half inch PVC up tube, and all. the only reason I've used half inch PVC over here is because I have a smaller air stone. Now the reason I do that is basically because um, I believe the normal air stones they fit very well. They fit very tight in half inch PVC, and my belief is those are going to not allow um, adequate water flow through that. You know that very small. There is very those are tight fitting. I don't believe you're going to have adequate water flow around those so that's why I go up to the three quarter inch with a normal air stone if you're going to use one of these smaller ones um, which they do work fine you'll get more than enough um, air to to cause water flow um, you're good to use half inch I generally just don't have a lot of those but um, they work just fine so for this one for these smaller builds, I've literally used a Tupperware lid top. So because of that lip around, and that's what you're looking for, just a good lip and space beneath, um, I've taken a small drill bit and just drilled a bunch of tiny holes. I cut a hole, 
um, smaller than the diameter of my half inch PVC and I took some silicone and I used the silicone to hold it and first if I'm using silicone I'll take a small bead of super glue um, so that the super glue holds it then I will come back with the silicone so that the silicone is my my true bond that I'm relying on if you don't want to use that method you can use hot glue hot glue works just as well I'm not gonna say just as well I should take that back it works good enough but silicone after 24 to 48 hours has after it's cured will work phenomenally versus hot glue being good enough so anyways let's get back over to the real build all right so for the real build right now I'm going to be setting up a 10 gallon tank and this is going to be a hospital slash nursery slash whatever I need it for 10 gallon and I'm actually gonna have two 10 gallons under my 75 gallon native tank this is not gonna be a biotope by any means until I can start locating native species of plants I do have native species of fish and most of those rocks are wild but we've got our 10 gallon tank and basically I'm going to go for a cheap simple filtration this is the filtration I have my three quarter inch up tubes and I have two one on each side and those are held in place by two plastic lock rings and three quarter inch um, couplings or not not couplings connectors now you don't need the uh, three quarter inch lock ring if you drill your hole small enough now I use a hole saw for this um, generally I hold the hole saw up to the um, uh, the threads of the connector and if it lines up just in like just I'm going to say if it fits just into that first ring, if it actually grabs onto that like it almost will thread, you're good to go. You won't be too big and you can literally thread it in. Generally, I still thread it in and then thread this on afterwards. But I'll use the same the same hole saw at least. But um, generally you're good to go if your hole saw fits on almost like it's not going like like it will thread then you're good to just thread them in and they will work um so for the under gravel filter itself what i've used is just a bit of plastic poly roofing panel now these come in sheets as big as 2 by 12 and they also come in sheets as small as 2 by 6 meaning you can easily cut them down to fit tanks as big as a 125 now I've got way too much furts in here obviously I'm starting to go green again I'm gonna have to do a big water change soon but that's what it originally was going that's where my original idea was to do this for was to see if I could make it for my 125 some 55 some 75s and the 100 now I've changed that basically because I've got a piece of tape on here from taping my background on to um, the uh, just stick that there if I need it uh, onto the um, 10 gallon. I can go ahead and spoil it with this. Um, what I use for backgrounds, it's pretty good. I use it in a lot of tanks. I used it on the 100 gallon here. I think it looks pretty good. We're black. It's um, it's black trash bag, yeah, real nice looking. I wouldn't use it for a show thing, but it works, works great for a fish room. But um, this is the roofing stuff, and they have two thicknesses. I'll go ahead and show you. Um, this thickness, um, anything above, I, I want to say anything above a thirty gallon, like a thirty gallon tall, thirty gallon long. Um, I would not use this so for 40 gallons for 55s possibly or excuse me I would use you can use that thickness for anything I haven't used this anywhere in my fish room for 10 gallons 20 gallons 30 gallons I think you're good 
For 40 gallons, 55 gallons, you're probably good as well. I would say for a 75 footprint and up, you need to upgrade to the thicker stuff. And the reason I say that is because it's not as strong once you start cutting holes in it. Um, to be perfectly honest, anything, and that's why I say really anything over the 30 gallon footprint, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this thinner stuff. And the reason I say that is because you've got to cut all these holes into it for it to work. Now I modeled this after the Lee's under gravel filter. So Lee's has an under gravel filter that's quite similar in design. If, you, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head. I'll put its name right here, right now, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, it's similar in, in design in that it, it has these V-like channels, and it has um, slits, if you will, running parallel with those channels. And they call it the, you know... I don't know, the Perfecta Flow or whatever it's called. I'll put that up here right now so you don't think I'm dumb and you don't think I'm crazy. Um, but they do have that. Basically, you know, I, I copied that one because I found this and I was looking for something that was strong enough and big enough to, uh, to fit a 125. I mean, to fit those giant tanks that people want to save money on. Now, when you look at the under gravel filters, and yeah, they're cheap, but I mean, when you price out an under gravel filter for, and I'm a cheap guy now, <laughs> when you price out an under gravel filter for a 55, and it literally cost $50, that sponge filter right there is rated for, I want to say 75 or 70 gallons. Um, now, I would not use that sponge filter alone for 55. I would use two of those for 55. I can buy that sponge filter brand new, free shipping from Amazon for like $6. Now, two of those, that's $12. Okay, $12 to filter a 55 gallon. Now, why would I spend $50? To get an under gravel filter, I wouldn't is what I wouldn't do. That's I just wouldn't. Now, the the cons of the sponge is they they stick out, they're big, and they basically ruin that little scape that I did. They they do. Um, under gravels, you just have two tubes coming up, similar to a hang on back. You have a tube going down, and um, similar to a, a, a canister, you have a tube going for the intake and a tube for your, um, your, your water going back in. Uh, so it is less, you know, intrusive on the skate. Um, here's my killifish tank. It's not, I don't feel I'm cycled enough. Um, pretty soon I actually need to go ahead and pull one of those sponges out. Um, I saw nitrites in there and I got worried so I threw uh, an extra one and that, that one was in there to originally seed the tank and it will come out. Uh, probably soon, maybe here in a little bit. I'll probably, I'll probably pull them out. I'll probably pull them both out within two weeks. But um, I do have this tank here, which is only filtered by the under gravel. What's up, little panda quarries? You guys are finally gonna come out, huh? I need to feed you, I guess. They're probably looking for food. But um, those work well. Um, just by itself I don't have any problems you can see the substrate I'm using uh, this is the same size gravel I want to go up here this is another under gravel filter the reason I'm using it here is because these are my marble crayfish and they eat sponges I've caught them destroying my sponge filters before so I had to give them another option I was not going to give them a canister or a hang on back they don't need anything that nice. They do great in this setting. Um, and basically, you see the media. The media here is um, is PVC tubes and pee pebbles. Now, I'm sorry for the glare, you guys. 
I really am. That stinks. If I put it up on the glass, I actually get rid of the glare. But um, you can kind of see, yeah. It works fine. I've got, you know, two three-quarter inch tubes with foam in there. Kind of keep them from finding their way down under the filter. But uh, I don't know that I've had any problems, but I haven't up lift, you know, lifted it up. Now, I do want to note here, this was actually a filter from a smaller tank that I had taken out. Now, it looks pretty big, but there's about two inches around it of space. You don't need to fit the under gravel to the size of the tank. It is perfectly fine to have space around it. There's no reason to freak out as long as you can kind of create a barrier of some sort from all your substrate around the edges just being pushed underneath. If you notice a lot of substrate sinking around the edges of your tank after you do it and let's say you have three to four inch gap on either side and you notice that sinking down and you're constantly having to cap it to level it or you just notice gaps in sinking at that point in time I would worry and I may go under and use the um, Instead of using the egg crates as spacers, I would use the PVC build and that'll keep some of your gravel from going under there. That'll guarantee you a better opening. Now the reason that's offset like that is because I'm bad with tape measures. <laughs> but um, generally with these 10 gallons, what I use is I use these egg crates. All that I'll do is I'll put them in like this. I'll put one basically in each corner. And now the reason I can get away with these, they're about 10 mil thick, one centimeter. And then I'll put one right there, another one there, and then whatever little scrap pieces can just go wherever, and then that will work. Now, I'm gonna grab a light real quick for you guys. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better now. But um, that's the basic setup of the tank. This light is gonna get in the way, but, um, trying to think if I'm leaving anything out maybe we can go over the price of this stuff I think that should be included so we know how cheap it is so I want to say and I'm gonna have to pull it up and I'll put the actual price right here for you guys but a two by eight foot piece is under fifteen dollars I want to say twelve dollars I want to say it starts at eight and goes up to maybe eighteen dollars for the two by twelve foot piece very cheap and that makes a lot now we all know pvc is very cheap you can get a ten foot piece of three quarter inch for what is it two bucks two fifty two eighty um, these guys right here about fifty cents a piece those are a different story because i robbed those off of another piece but like i said you don't need those they work fine without it i have a lot of tanks that i don't use those in um, and then we need to go over how I cut my holes. Alright, so this is the most expensive part of the build. And it's this tool that I bought at Walmart. Um, I don't know what it is called off the top of my head. It's called the Hyper Tough. That's, that's what kind of tool it is. It's a Hyper Tough. But uh, no, it's just like some type of reciprocating saw. Generally used to cut drywall. Um, originally, I tried to use my Dremel. And um, I really hate Dremels because it's just a, a motor they're loose cannons in my opinion it's a motor and you literally screw some type of odd particle disc to it and that motor just whizzes ridiculously fast until that disc decides to blow up while you're cutting stuff and send itself flying around your you know your room and your face at ridiculously high speeds I don't like Dremels. They also just melt this plastic while they cut it. Uh, this has a little saw. So it cuts it and you can kind of see the damage I do. Literally you just take this saw and you just push it in and it will cut these perfect little slits like so. I'll go ahead and I'll cut it once for you so you guys get an idea. Alright so pretty simple here. Variable speed. I want to say $20 for the tool and a few sets of, of these little saws. This can be very handy as well. But like I said, this is the most expensive part. If you can find another way to do it, you can. I do want to mention I can cut this with scissors. Big scissors, but small scissors will cut it. 
this stuff right here, if you have 10s, 20s, 20s long, 20 longs, this stuff will work. You can cut this stuff with scissors just fine. You could probably drill holes in it and it would work. You just need a lot more holes. Um, and you got to keep your holes smaller than your gravel. This is the size gravel that I'm using. Um, my opinion, I can get more flow out of this with less work. That's why I went with this. But basically, turn it on. So I hope that gives you the idea of how it works. Basically, then I come over it. Now that stuff's rough. You may not just want to use your hands. It, I've cut my hands doing that. Um, and then I just kind of scrape it off. And uh, considering it's just going to be under the gravel, once I get it scraped off, I'm really not worried about it. Um, you can clean it up with sandpaper. Works really good at kind of cleaning it up. This is just plastic. Um, so there's no worries. Um, I, I believe it's even UV, UV rated considering it's it's for roofs. That's what this is for. If you go to Home Depot or your Lowe's or your hardware store, this is going to be in your roofing section wherever they keep the tin roofs, the plastic roofs, all that stuff um, in the panels. Uh, so basically it's that simple. I'll show you what I cut this stuff with though because this is a little bit thicker than your thinner clear stuff. Um, which you can cut with real, right, scissors. real scissors, dainty scissors. Let's uh, grab this little corner. Okay, so it looks like, oh man, I'm not even, this is the wrong hand too because I'm not right handed, but boom, cuts it off, right? Perfect. Easy enough. Uh, it does cut with regular scissors. I want to show you with my left hand so I can actually cut like a good little chunk of it off. That's not a good chunk, but boom, see? So you can see, I'm just sitting here cutting it perfectly fine. It's very easy to work with. That's why I really said, this is the only tool you need. And the reason I like to use this, it, I use this because it's easy. It, it gives me my slits. It, it goes with my original design. Now, you guys, feel free to change this up, adapt it to your needs make it easier where you can I think the goal here is flow the only thing uh, thing I think we could change here you could drill a bunch of little holes you could take one of those little hot knives and burn a bunch of little holes your holes need to be smaller than your gravel this is the gravel that I use this is standard aquarium size gravel that you would get from any pet co pet smart if you watch my gravel video at the end of this, I'll show you how I pay $10 for 50 pounds of this. And that, I pay $10 for, for this bag full. Okay? I pay $10 for that. And I can get it in multiple colors. So, um, check out that video if you want to know how I get that there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to if you live in my area shoot me a message down below and I'll tell you where where I get it um, uh, I promise you my ag store which is where I get it from is more than happy to get it for you as well for the same exact price but um, and that's how this is built um, I'll kind of I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this all together um, so you guys can kind of sit back and just watch me um, basically finish building the filtration for this tank. Go ahead and get our 
top elbows on it. These are not necessary. They're optional. So one I've already got a hole drilled in. I need to drill a hole in the other. I'll show you how I choose what drill bit so size. I've got a short piece of airline here. Basically, I want it. I want the drill bit to be just smaller than the airline. Let's see if I have out of this plethora of drill bits if I have the correct size. And I want it to be just smaller so that I don't lose any airflow to that actually looks to be it. Um, so basically holding it up we can see actually that it fits in but not easily. So that is good to go. I'll go ahead And it's always, always good to have spares and extras. You can buy these in bulk uh, for pretty cheap. So go ahead and sorry you guys can't quite see this. And then at this point I'm in, I kind of hold it and allow it, allow it to kind of straighten, it, straighten itself out. Now, I am not 100% that that is even big enough. Too small still. Not a problem, we can still make it bigger. Uh, it's a lot easier to make a hole bigger than it is to make a hole smaller. Looks like out of all this stuff, I do not have the right drill bit. That is always, always fun to lose your drill bits. What I do have is this step bit or unibit. And with that, I can basically choose any, any size bit that I want. See if I messed it up. Um, be honest, that's a bit looser than I would like, but still tight enough that it's not gonna allow air to um, to pass through. Now I like it to be a good tight fit to where it kind of have to force it through, like in this one. See how it doesn't really want to go, and basically I have to force the start and then kind of just inch it through and then pull it the rest of the way and then that kind of holds my depth right 